Today, I'm gonna to tell you about what Robert William Fisher did to his family. Want a preview? Robert William Fisher was charged with taking the lives of his wife and two children by setting off multiple explosions in the family home. It's been 20 years and Robert has yet to be found. On April 9th, 2001, Robert finished his respiratory therapist shift at the Scottsdale Mayo Clinic. About 10 o'clock that night, a neighbor mentioned hearing fighting coming from the Fisher's home. This wasn't unusual as Robert and Mary had major marriage issues and argued often. The following morning, a massive boom came from the house. Neighbors said that the sound was louder than a gunshot. They said it sounded like a detonator of sorts. They looked outside to find that the Fisher home had just exploded and was in flames. Emergency services were called to the scene right away. While they waited for arrival, neighbors tried to calm the nearly 20 foot flames by using water from their garden hoses. Thankfully, firefighters arrived in time to get the fire under control before it could spread to any of the other homes in the neighborhood. But several smaller explosions occurred inside the house from either ammunition or paint cans, forcing them to keep their distance for a long while. The house was completely destroyed. The initial explosion was focused towards the center of the house near the living room. It was powerful enough to knock down the front brick wall. After a short while, the entire house crumbled and was burned to the ground. Firefighters eventually determined that the gas line from the back of the house had been pulled, filling the whole house up with gas. Then a candle was lit, which caused the explosion. When the first responders went into the house to see if anyone was alive, they would have had no such luck. Inside were the bodies of 38-year-old Mary Fisher and her two children, 12-year-old Brittany and 10-year-old Robert Jr. They were found in their beds with injuries far worse than just burns. Mary had a bullet hole in the back of her head. Brittany and Robert Jr had their necks slashed from ear to ear. But there was one family member that was not in the house, the dad, Robert William Fisher. Where was he? Four days after the passing of his wife and two children, Robert was nowhere to be found and was named the only suspect in the case. At 10.43 p.m. on the night before the explosion, police found footage of Robert wearing an Oakland Raiders hat withdrawing $280 from an ATM machine. Mary's forerunner was visible in the background. Across the state of Arizona, police officers were alerted of the situation. They were potentially dealing with a dangerous fugitive. On April 20th, the last known piece of physical evidence of Robert's whereabouts was discovered, Mary's forerunner. It was found by police abandoned 100 miles north of Scottsdale in the Tonto National Forest. Under the car was Blue, the family dog. It had been left for dead and was cowering next to the forerunner, starving and trying to make shelter. The police found the Oakland Raider hat inside the car. Next to it was a pile of human excrement, but no signs of Robert anywhere. The Tonto National Forest is large and has over a dozen caves throughout. The police only looked through one cave and didn't find any clues as to where Robert could be. The cave systems are enormous and go on for miles, and by that point, he was most likely gone. Later, professional cave divers said Robert probably used them as a hiding place before fleeing committing suicide, or running out of oxygen. Less than a mile from where the car was found was a Native American reservation, which the police didn't think to search. Instead, they followed footsteps they found leading that way and stopped once they reached Fort Apache. Lori Greenbeck, a friend of the family, said in an interview that her husband and Robert had gone on a fishing trip around that area before the murders. He knew the area really well, and she believed that he was using the trip as an excuse to scout out the perfect spot for his hideaway. A few months later, an arrest warrant was issued, charging Robert with three counts of first-degree murder and one count of arson. On a federal level, the U.S. District Court for Arizona declared him a fugitive who had fled unlawfully to avoid prosecution. About a year later, Robert Fisher was placed on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list, which is a list you might not want to be on. They also offered up a $100,000 reward for anyone who could give them information to catch this guy. Hundreds of people called in to report possible sightings of Robert, but all of them came back false or inconclusive. At one point, an individual had been taken into custody because he bore a shocking resemblance to Robert, just with different fingerprints. He was arrested in Vancouver, British Columbia by Canadian law enforcement. This man was missing a tooth where Robert had a gold crown. He also had a large scar from surgery on his back, just like Robert. The man was held for the entire week before someone could come and identify that it wasn't really Robert. There was a little drama surrounding the fingerprint situation, and many people believe that the person was Robert, that he just doctored his fingerprints. 
However, no scarring led to that conclusion and the man was released. On November 3rd, 2021, Robert Fisher was removed from the FBI's top 10 most wanted list and replaced with an alleged leader of the MS-13 gang. Even though his name and face was removed, Robert is still considered a fugitive. No one knows precisely where he is, but it's believed he has ties to Florida and Mexico. It is also thought that he has completely changed his appearance to blend in and is probably working in some rural town. There is significant speculation if Robert is even alive. Many believe that too much time has passed with nothing to show. He could have committed suicide. However, many people still think he's out there. So what led Robert to commit such a heinous crime? Let's take a look at his history to see if we can figure that out. Robert William Fisher was born on April 13th, 1961 in Brooklyn, New York. His parents, William and Jan, had two other children, both daughters. William worked as a banker while Jan stayed at home. In 1976, when Robert was 15 years old, William and Jan split up. William moved to Tucson, Arizona with his three children, who were enrolled in Saguaro High School. The divorce was really messy and had lasting impacts on Robert and his siblings. He had a lot of resentment towards his mother for splitting up the family. Now, divorce is not easy for anyone, parents or kids, but going through that as a teenager can't be easy. Robert was a sophomore in high school going through significant changes. He moved across the country and left everything he knew behind. Nothing about this situation is simple. Once Robert graduated high school and entered the working world, he enlisted in the United States Navy. He dreamed of becoming part of the SEALs, but was unsuccessful in his endeavors. After Robert was discharged in 1982, he tried his hand at a few different jobs. He worked as a firefighter for a short period of time, but was released after injuring his back. Robert was the textbook definition of a manly man. He enjoyed nature and loved being outdoors. He had many hobbies related to killing and or catching animals, big into fishing and going on hunting trips. However, several of Robert's friends noticed that he was displaying some super weird behavior during these trips. Another instance of Robert's strange behavior was when he snuck up on a family enjoying a nice picnic together and fired a bullet into the air, terrifying everyone. You don't just want to sneak up on people with deadly weapons, and you especially don't want to fire them into the sky. In the early 1980s, Robert met Mary Jean Cooper at a Baptist church social gathering. Mary was incredibly close with her family and cherished her faith and relationship with God. In 1987, Robert and Mary got married. Shortly after, the two moved to Scottsdale, Arizona to be near Mary's parents. They went on to have two children, Brittany and Robert Jr. Mary had always wanted to be a mother, so this was such a joy for her. She stayed at home to take care of the kids till they were old enough to go to school, and that's when she took a part-time job at a friend's medical company. In the late 80s, Robert worked as a weed sprayer. He had difficulty in this position because of his bad back, but was noted as a great employee. Eventually, Robert found work in the medical field as a catheter technician and a respiratory therapist. In his off time, he still wanted to be outdoors and wanted his family to participate in his activities. As a father, Robert was very unpredictable and pretty distant and kind of awkward. He knew the relationship wasn't there, but he tried to force cohesion anyways. One time, he threw both of his children off a boat into the water so that they could learn to swim. Despite both of them screaming and panicking, Robert didn't seem to care. His son did not have the same love for nature as he did, and he had little to no interest in hunting. Now, this upset Robert, and he was very vocal about his embarrassment towards his son's lack of interest. In the relationship department, Mary and Robert's marriage was not great, which was the understatement of this century. Robert was a very controlling, authoritarian type person, and everyone in the house could feel that because they would walk on eggshells around him. When Mary wanted to decorate the home, Robert had nothing but negative opinions. He wouldn't allow the walls to be painted any other color except for white, and only a few pictures could be hung up. Mary's personal belongings and family gifts had to be tucked away and out of sight. If anything was out of place or not to Robert's liking, he had something to say about it and needed to be changed immediately. In short, he needed total control over everything and everyone. Mary and Robert constantly went back and forth fighting over money and their life. Once, he even took a hose and sprayed her down when she said something that he didn't like. And not in the funny, haha, we're playing around kind of way, but in a deliberate, mean-spirited kind of way. 
One of their neighbors, Wade, said Robert and Mary were constantly screaming. Everybody heard it. You could hear it in the house next door, and you never really heard him scream, which is kind of weird. I, I mean, he had a way about him, but you never really heard him scream. You always heard his wife screaming things like, you're worthless, I, I could have done better than you, we should get a divorce. Despite things clearly being off, Robert was dedicated to keeping up appearances. Their extended family could never sense anything was wrong with Robert, but he never got too close to them. He was scared of developing relationships and getting burned, but still wanted to look like a devoted dad to a happy family. They regularly attended church as a family, and Robert and Mary even took advantage of the church's marriage counseling services. But it was to the point where Mary had enough. Right before the crime, she told multiple friends that she was going to file for divorce. Come to find out, Robert had cheated on Mary and told his co-workers about it. He went to a massage parlor and received services from a s worker. Shortly after that, Robert was sick for several days and discovered that it was a urinary tract infection. He was terrified that his wife would find out what he'd been up to, especially if he was dealing with a UTI after a spa day. He felt intense guilt after this and he knew that he needed to get his family life and his marriage back in order. But this did not last for very long before he offed his entire family. Okay, so it seems Robert did this because he was unhappy in his marriage and he couldn't fix it. Maybe he didn't want to get a divorce since he went through it with his parents and it was awful. So instead he executed his wife? I mean, that doesn't really seem justified to me. And then why would he kill his kids too? I, I feel like there had to be something more going on in Robert's mind. I mean, was he dealing with an undiagnosed mental illness or was he just a cruel person? Well, that's the case of Robert William Fisher. There's something about unsolved cases that really gets to my core. I want answers, I want justice. I kind of believe that Robert is still out there. I, I feel like he's probably fled the country and has started a new family with a new identity. What do you think? Please leave your theories in the comments below. In the meantime, please stay safe out there. Have a good one, goodbye.